And what I'm going to talk to you about today is something that started out as a classroom assignment a couple years ago in 2010 as part of my research in the future of transactions when I was getting my master's in strategic foresight. And uh, I became fascinated by what was happening in the world of transactions. So I'm going to share with you some of the trends, some of the ways that we might end up transacting in the future. And you're going to see a theme. We, we didn't do this on purpose. I never saw any of the presentations that my colleagues this morning gave. But I mimic a lot of the same trends. And I'm applying them to how we're going to transact both financially and non-financial transactions. So I think we live in a really fantastic time in the world right now when it comes to financial transactions. Um, I've been, I live in Los Angeles, and I've been traveling to Europe and all over the world pretty a lot the last two years. And every time I go, I go with my handy credit card and my debit card. And I have completed entire international trips without even converting any local cash. I think that's amazing. There's this great quote by Arthur C. Clarke saying, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So I was in Amsterdam a few days ago, and I needed some cash. And so I went to this amazing machine in a street corner, and I put my credit card in, and I pushed some buttons, and then I had 150 euros. I, that's magic, right? Like That's like getting free money. Well, it's not free money, but it's, it's getting in something that you wouldn't think, right? You understand that, uh, for those of us who understand the background of the technology and the financial infrastructure, this isn't magic. But if you take a different perspective, it is. And so I want to show some new ways that we might experiment with transactions that seem like magic today, but, not, but might not be magic in the future. Technology is giving us amazing new ways to transact. Um, you can, I've got some examples up here. Um, how many people are familiar with Square, the little um, dongle that fits in to your iPhone? It's this white thing down here, and it works with a, a mobile uh, iPhone uh, financial application, which enables small businesses to accept credit cards, which allows them to have more transactions and sell more products and services. Um, we have, con you, in Europe, you guys are way ahead of us in the States with contactless payments, using RFID to be able to just swipe or tap and go. And um, it's making it easier to have fast, secure transactions. But that's not the only way people are experimenting. It's also with additional currencies. We're all familiar with the global currencies that we use today. Uh, there are currencies that are created for certain niche markets. Example for gaming. Uh, World of Warcraft is an online global phenomenon, and lots of people play, and they have their own currency that they use inside this world. This is like the tokens. I don't know if you had these here. When, when you were kids, you'd go to the arcade, and rather than pay with quarters, you'd have to convert your quarters to tokens and then play the video games. Uh, people can really only use these currencies within that community, but people want to be able to convert them into other currencies to transact them. Corporations, lots of corporations have currencies today, but we don't necessarily think of them as currencies. Frequent flyer miles, I see as a form of currency, as well as reward points or loyalty points. They're a way that allows you to have a relationship with that corporation and continue to transact with them, and for them to be able to reward you in a non-financial way, but in a way that they can uh, give you something. And people, actually, there are websites where you can swap and change and exchange rewards points, and frequent flyer miles. Information is important, and people buy and sell it, but uh, you can't necessarily convert it or cash it out. It does influence your cash flow. If you think about um, eBay and Yelp ratings, Yelp is a website in the United States where people who go and have experiences with businesses can write up their reviews of them. Now, if you get a good review on Yelp, or say you have several recommendations on LinkedIn, that increases the likelihood of you to be able to have more projects, more customers, potentially charge more for your services, and generally increase your cash flow. 
even though you can't convert, I can't say, oh, I need to pay rent this month, I need to convert my LinkedIn recommendations into some cash, my LinkedIn recommendations do convert into more projects or more interesting projects or being able to work with other people. Finally, I want to mention a type of currency that I call a value-encoded currency. These are currencies like Bitcoin and Venn where there are non-financial uh, values associated with the currency. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means with Bitcoin. How many people are familiar with Bitcoin here? If you've heard of it or it's been so, a few of you. So Bitcoin was a currency that was developed uh, by some people that decided that the existing ways to transact and the currencies that they had available were not good enough for them, that they, they needed something, they, they wanted more functionality, they wanted a different market system that supported their values. The values the creators of Bitcoin had were decentralization, peer-to-peer, -peer, a lack of trust in large government organizations, uh, a sense that... Um, Currency couldn't be devalued through inflation. They created a currency called Bitcoin, and they just did it. They didn't ask for permission. What's interesting is that the people that participate in this economy and use Bitcoin also share those values. So when you make a transaction in Bitcoin, it's not just about how many Bitcoins you paid. It's about the fact that you used Bitcoin. And because you used Bitcoin, there's a high likelihood that you have the same values that the person who you're transacting with. One other point I want to mention here is that a lot of people are using Bitcoin to experiment. That doesn't mean that they're not using credit cards or mobile payments or cash, but they've added Bitcoin as a method for them to be able to have these transactions. And so Bitcoin's not the only place where people are experimenting. This is a list of what I call additional economies. When I do my research, I ask people how many participate in these additional economies, which we call the gift economy, or bartering, or swapping, or collaborative consumption, um, the reputation. How many of you have participated in one of these economies? Like a lot of you. Often when people talk about these economies, there's this underlying assumption that one of these will replace what we use today. I think this does a huge disservice to the work and where we've come to with our financial system today, giving us fast, secure, seamless transactions, but we want to do more. And these technologies, these economies, have kind of increased our interest in trying and experimenting things. They don't need to replace what we already have. We are extending into areas that where our existing system can't support. So I want to use an example with this with couch surfing. How many are, are people here familiar with couch surfing? Some of you? Oh yeah, okay, great, good amount. It's this idea you, you register your um, uh, you, you register yourself on a website and you say whether your couch is available for someone to to stay on it. Someone you can choose who, if they're going to stay on it. But in this example, I want to kind of just show how this flows here. So you start out with some money, and you buy a couch, because you have to have money to buy the couch. And then once you have it, you can use it privately for yourself. But you don't use the couch 24-7. So when you're not using it, you can say, OK, when I'm not using it, I'll choose if, someone, if I want someone to use it or not. So when you're done with it, you can decide, I'm going to sell it. And Craigslist is a great um, a classified site that a lot of people use in the United States. Um, you can swap it or trade it for, say, a sewing machine or, or something else that you might be interested in. Um, and you can also give it away. Uh, there's another site in the United States called Freecycler, where peop if people need something, they ask for it, and someone can provide it. Or if you're trying to get rid of something, but it still has value, kind of like the the previous presentation where it still has use, but you want higher performance, um, you can give to someone who needs it, and they can get more value out of it. In all of these communities, they are created around a shared value, 
around using the couch, around uh, reselling, around swapping or trading. And so these non-financial transactions support more of them. I love this photo. This, you're like, what's going on here, right? This is a photo from a toy swap in Chicago. And the idea here is that the guy came with the deer head, which I can just imagine his girlfriend said, get rid of that deer head. <laughs> and um, the woman came with this toy. And they went to this, this, this shop, and the, the toy shop just was ha creating the space to have this toy swap. And they both got rid of something that they no longer valued and in exchange got something that they were really excited about. And I love the look on their faces, right? They're so happy. And they're going to they're gonna go away from this transaction with not only a great new object, which means they didn't have to pay money for, but they have a great story on how they got it. And so these kinds of positive interactions make people want to have more of these types of non-financial transactions. It's that kind of shifting behavior that changes our needs. And this is the slide that's kind of like highlighting a lot of the things you've already heard today. We are shifting our values about what we, how we interact in the world and what's important to us. Um, from recycling and reusing to not throwing things away anymore, to having collaborative consumption and sharing what one already has with someone else, to um, design products can't, no, products are not only required to be functional, they must be beautiful. And uh, along with that, entrepreneurship, uh, in the 15 years that I've worked in the tech industry in Silicon Valley, it is cheaper than ever to start a company. And you almost have nothing to lose. If you have an idea, you, you should go out and start it. And part of that is building upon this whole maker activity and this maker uh, idea where you're just, you get the ideas and you go off and you start it. And that's an example of that is the Bitcoin is they didn't ask for permission for, from a bank or from a regulation in industry. They just did it. I want to talk about the layers in a transaction. So for this example, we'll take a, this latte and say it costs a dollar. So in the normal transaction that's tracked by our, our traditional financial system, I give you a dollar, you give me a coffee. But there's a lot more information about that transaction, information I want to share and you want to know. It's this data. But we can't communicate it right now with a credit card or purchase transaction unless I'm going to give you a compliment. Well, that can change. And that's what a lot of these different currencies are looking to do. There's more information about this transaction, like where did I buy it? From a local cafe? From a large company? How was it prepared? Was it a special kind of coffee? Did I use a rewards card? Did I receive rewards points? How did I even pay for it? with a credit card or cash, or maybe it was my, my freebie after buying 12. This information is important, and we want to share it. And our trouble is that our existing system doesn't allow to share these higher levels of information. So people are experimenting in ways that they can do that. In addition to everything that uh, I do when I was introduced, I also make films. And um, in my short film, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, it's a scenario of the future where um, people have choices on how to pay for things. In this example, um, it's a smart check, and when someone is selecting the items to pay for, they can actually rate them right on that check. Um, this is the smart check that gives you choices on how to pay for things how, how you might want to versus credit cards or mobile application or even a private coin. This is the smart coin. It's a piece of hardware that makes it easy for people to have a secure private transaction. And it was specifically designed after Bitcoin. And one thing I really enjoyed, I, I, this is kind of the synchronicity of the event. In, in the short film, which we'll watch very shortly, um, the Blue Orbit coin is a corporate currency that people can collect and participate to earn a sub-orbit flight. And in this example, the space captain who's at dinner with her friends, she actually has, as part of her wings, is the ability to transfer points 
from her corporate currency into the waiter. And one thing that's interesting about this um, future is that the waiter can choose how he wants to accept his tip. And he's cho chosen to accept his tip in another currency that's different from the currency that the restaurant is being paid in. So, okay. And um, in this future, and as in all these new things that we need to come up with, we have the same, uh, same concerns that we have in the past, which is security and reliability and privacy. So let's take a look at the clip. So is there a sunrise in outer space? Yeah, there's totally a sunrise. It's amazing. You look outside your ship, and you see it rising, you see the colors it leaves behind. I'm so jealous. You should make me your co-pilot. Not a chance. <laughs> it was everything. Everything was great. Delicious. Great. Is there anything else I can grab for you guys? Uh, just a checklist. Thanks. So how are we going to do this? Hey, does anyone have change for this? An antique. <laughs> do people still carry these around? Ah, uh, the good old days. Jason, you didn't have any cash in the good old days? <laughs> well, cash couldn't do this. Roast chicken, two Jack and Cokes. And the best thing is, it's totally anonymous. That's what they say, I'm not so sure. I still worry about who might be tracking this information, what they might be doing with it. No, here, let me get this. You got the tickets earlier. You sure? I insist, I rarely get to see you, at least in the flesh. Thanks for picking up the wine, guys. Sure. Our pleasure. <laughs> Interesting. Our waiter has asked to be tipped in Blue Orbit credits. I can take care of that. <laughs> you've seen our promotion? See the sun like you've never seen it before. <laughs> Suborbital sunset. <laughs> Looks like our waiter's seen it too. When do you go back up? Two days. We all good here? We're good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your trip. I really want to encourage you to think about how you can use them in your own day-to-day -day life. When you have the transactions, these normal everyday transactions, what additional information do you want to communicate with them? How, do you want to communicate through them? And think of these new ways of transacting as extending what we've already built into new places. And um, then maybe we can all go to the moon. So um, thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>